We are on the border of Iran and Pakistan. Nights have a special color, difficult to say exactly what the color is. There is a silence, as though it is not a silence. Well, my dear Marx, I have to depart at night, even if I don't see well, even if this silence is deafening. You know, I must begin this journey at night. You may not be able to imagine the heat of midday here, but I'm sure if in your lifetime you were forced to escape the bullets of board guards while carrying things on your back, you may have dedicated some of your letters to Engels and possibly some sections of Capital and Grundrisse to our conditions, to the impact of the harsh heat on our head in Balochistan. No, I'm certain that this heat is not imaginable for you. You know, it's not even comparable to the burning fires in the coal mines of the 18th century England. What? Oliver Twist? Well, if he was here, even his condition would have been different from what is depicted in the Dickens novel. Maybe when Oliver was going to fetch water, he would have been drowned in the well, or a crocodile would have swallowed him up. You know, water is no longer crucial for understanding the East. It's a global concern. Millions of people don't have clean water. Can you believe that 150 years has passed since your time, but capitalism has failed to resolve this issue? Unfortunately, yes, Engels' prediction was correct. Nature really is taking revenge on human beings. By the way, we don't have much time left on this planet. In fact, in the next few years, we have been falling into a pattern with no return. Don't know, maybe 20 years, 30 years, or a bit more, or a bit less. By then, all of humanity will have ended, and no one survives on this planet. Think about it. The capitalists who haven't been able to resolve the issue of water or bread for millions of people are planning to travel to the other planets. What? Yes, it seems absurd. But planet Earth doesn't have enough capacity anymore for the expansion of capital. Just imagine, one day we talk about the downward trend of the rate of profit or the crisis of capitalism in Mars, or on a planet with name we still don't know. But I wish the filth of capitalism never reaches the planet B612, and that little prince is never forced into child labor. He would be exploited by the adults of the bourgeois class, even with his curious mind and his peculiar look they would steal his day and night and wouldn't leave time for him to water his flowers. But let's be honest, Karl Marx, you're very lucky to cross this border now. Just think about it. In 50 or 60 years, there will be much turmoil here. Some hundreds of millions Filipinos, Indonesians, Bangladeshi or Pakistani want to pass through this border. Sure, you're right. They are all the same. By the way, isn't this coat that you're wearing the same famous coat that you repeatedly mentioned in Capital Volume 1? I was always thinking of it when the needle of the sewing machine was piercing fabrics. Yes, I was working in a garment factory with 3,000 other women. Of course, textile is still important, but there is a bit of change in its direction. Now we make them, and the Brits, French, Belgians, Americans wear them. Well, it is profitable for them. Now most of, of their profits come from finance capital, the same damn Scrooges. We are not displaced anymore through the enclosure of the commons. Big agro-business have monopolized the seeds. Now we even have to pay for the seeds that were cultivated in our lands, generation after generation. 
The grim and the filth that you described at the dawn of capitalism still exist. You predicted well. Capitalism even crossed the Great Wall of China. There is no space on earth inhabited by people without capitalism. Those miseries you mentioned in your letters to Engels about the function of capitalism in India, now it has taken over the entire world. What? Yes, I told you. You've heard it right. 3,000 women. All of my co-workers are women. Poverty is feminized. Work too. Even more than when you wrote about and critiqued the political economy. It is like fiction. One day my dad came to me. It was sunset, and he told us that our land could no longer feed the four of us. My sister and I had three choices. To stay and die of hunger, prostitution in the slums, or forced labor in those damn factories. So we went to the city and to those damn factories. Of course, most of the time, our contracts came with the demand for sexual services too. Twelve hours of work for four dollars. No, no, really one hundred times worse than for the workers of your time. Well, you know, two billion of, of the nearly eight billion on earth live in slums. It's a planet of slums in this very Balochistan that we are passing through. Those people carrying fuels, they all live in slums. You know, whenever I notice names of famous brands, I smell burned flesh. I hear the scream in my head. One day, a four-story building on the other side of the street caught fire. A total of 85 women and girls burned in that building. Maria burned to death, too. The Afghan girl, don't know her age. Her father was killed in the war and her hands were more wrinkled and withered than any of ours. Those garments, those garments all smell the same. Indeed, everything smells and sounds the same. All that we are producing are owned by the capitalist. All has the same smell. What are you thinking about, my dear Marx? What a brutal cold. We are passing through Kurdish territory. I know, Marx, it is not easy for a man your age to walk through snow, but there is no other way. This is the only way to stay safe. This is the only path to escape the bullets of the border guards. Let's imagine now, in the middle of this snow, in the midst of our anxiety and the stress, a shooting by border guards. What's going on in their head? This will help to reduce our fear, and we will feel the coldness of, of a snow less. Do you see that woman who carries a box many times her size? Last year, the border guards killed her father. She has four little siblings. To feed them, she has to travel through here twice a month. Do you see that tall guy? The one who has covered his face because of the cold? He just finished university, yet he is still hungry and jobless. See that old man next to him? The one whose face is swollen because of a toothache. Two years ago, he lost his youngest child on one of these trails when he stepped on a landmine. Since then, he is a coal bar. Coal bar? Well, it is not easy to explain. Let me try differently. Do you remember those poor workers of your time? Those who cut woods to warm their homes and then the police would beat them up? This is almost the same scene. They are all jobless people who have to travel kilometers through mountains in a snow or heat, through the bullets of the board guards to carry heavy loads, tea, alcohol, chocolate, everything that you can imagine. There is a Kurdish song that says, I'm selling my life today for tomorrow's bread 
that the baker is not even buying my life. But what should we call this condition? How to name it? Here it's not even super exploitation. Capitalism even doesn't have the capacity to exploit people. Yes, yes, the same story of mechanization and speeding up the production and reducing its cost. But you know, today even the surplus reserved army of labor in your book can't explain this hell. Majority of the world population are falling outside of the capitalist economy. Even exploitation is no longer an option. The bourgeoisie doesn't need them anymore. Wars have displaced them. Think about it. Millions are thrown out of the circulation of capital, but capitalism is not touched. As if people don't exist. People are thrown into the streets because of the surplus value of capital and always live under the shadow of death. Do you remember the story of free labor in capital? We still have massive migration of people from rural areas to cities, but this system doesn't have the capacity to absorb people anymore. Millions of people are invisible to capitalism. The bourgeois and imperialist states don't see them anymore, don't hear their voices when tens of millions of these destitutes arrive at their borders, only then do they become visible to them. Every year thousands take the risk and take to the sea to leave. They take their lives into their own hands and traverse these horrific routes that you even cannot imagine in your worst nightmare. They go through mountains, deserts, or sea, They carry their memories, are lonely, and only hope to arrive somewhere to sell their labor power, so they risk everything. Of course, most lose their life in the sea, or after two days of walking, while die of hunger, thirst, or maybe in snow they freeze to death. No one to rescue them. Or maybe when they are trying to pass through an icy mountain while their heavy breathing is echoing in their head, in a moment when they are moving their legs like a puppet, lose their balance and plunge to the bottom of the cliff, waiting for the spring to return their their dead bodies. Maybe even the border guard shoots them, robs them or even rapes them. When only one-tenth of them arrive in Europe or North America, then they will be forgotten in refugee camps. And when only one-third of these refugees is accepted, then they scream that, hey, we've accepted many destitute refugees. Bastards, you created this misery. We are here because you and your system took everything from us. Our lands, jobs, factories, villages, our life, the right to eat, the right to freedom, our security. You took everything and turned it into a commodity for exchange. What? Right, exactly, exactly. We are the mirror image of the world created by capitalism. We are living your books line by line as if you wrote them with our blood and voice. We have arrived at the gate of Europe. You're right to be tired and breathless, but I'm delighted to see the same enthusiasm in your eyes, the same passion that you had for changing the world. Now, when you look at the depth in people's eyes, you can understand many things. The look of women workers at the burned down buildings of a factory in Dhaka, the mother whose child was left under the rubble in Aleppo, the daughter who was killed in by, by his father, the look of an old woman who is carrying bread from Kabul to Istanbul to feed her grandchildren, and an Arab woman who is running away from home who is raped in a foreign land. A sad face of a young man whose sister 
was shot by the security forces in the 2011 Arab uprisings or 2019 uprising in Iran, or a Palestinian woman who was shot by an Israeli soldier, a boy who left his leg in Baghdad and now has arrived here. The anger in the eye of that Indian woman who confronted the policemen and threatened him. Yes, you're right. It is not only geography, it is history too. Exactly what you're right. When you listen carefully, they all are familiar voices, as if we can hear in these islands the moaning of the slaves at wake on the Middle Atlantic Passage, the Indian indentured workers in the British plantations, the prostitutes of South Korea, the mine workers in Brazil and Chile, the stolen children of indigenous people in Canada. So many people from different geographies, with different languages, with thousands of diverse cultural heritages have arrived in these islands. Pain and suffering are the common language of all people whom you see here. I think hunger, envy, anger, are certainly and certainly hope have no international vocabulary. It seems no matter where you are from, you can understand words and, and the look of anyone who has experienced these forms of suffering. Do you remember I almost fell off that icy cliff in Kurdistan when that Afghan boy held onto my hands? At that very moment, I felt I knew him well. I knew the harsh lines on his palms. It looked like a map, the map of a universal suffering. I thought he should hold a gun, aim at the piled up filth in this world. Do you remember those little kids whose clothes were caught on the barbed wires at the border? I recognized well that fear in their eyes. Honestly, Marx, I really don't want these kids to arrive in Europe and North America or anywhere else. They will fall into the ugly cycle of work and suffering for a life full of pain that they don't deserve. I don't want them to risk the sea and the mountain out of fear for their lives. We are not only the same in our sufferings and the path we have shared, but our future is also entangled. We either stay in this continuous torturous situation or will perish all together. Or we'll do what invigorated us when we talked about it. Yes, yes, the same excitement and happiness. Those days when every day that passes feel like 20 years. Those masses who dance to the end of bread, poetry and freedom. Those singing youth who have red bands on their arms. Oh yes, the same song like a collective dance. A woman who is standing at the front of the line. A group of political prisoners released from prison. We all are shaking. Listen, the sound is coming. Marx, listen. It is the sound. Listen. Listen.